Boy, do I have something to share with you today. If you're a home brewer and into electric brewing, but do not like the time and effort it takes to clean those heating elements after brew day, stick around, I got something to show you. Hello everyone and welcome back. Larry here again to talk about a new product I got my hands on by Blickman Engineering, a new kettle. You might be thinking, kettle, who cares? Kettles are kettles. Well, this is an electric kettle. You're like, well, okay, well, who cares? There's a lot of electric kettles out there. They already have a pretty cool one with the boil coil, right? Well, there's something better. Meet the boiler maker's surface. A kettle without a heating coil. There is no heating element inside. It's completely smooth on the bottom. And as you can probably already imagine, the biggest advantage of such a kettle is the ease of cleaning. Blickman set one to me a while back. Uh, they've been developing this for a while. I've actually had this on hand for a while. I've been kind of keeping it low key, not sharing it with you folks until they do the product launch, which just happened. And here I am to tell you how excited I am about this product. It's changed the way I feel about brew days, especially the cleanup side of this, which is to me the biggest advantage of this kettle. And there's some others too, but cleaning is the number one, number one reason why you would want this kettle. I mean, with no heating element inside, you're not gonna spend what I do. I don't know how long, if I, I don't think I've even timed myself. It might've been as little as five, 10 minutes. It might've been as long as an hour, depending on how badly uh, crudded the heating elements were. And not just the Blickman one, others as well. I'm just so excited to share this information with you guys finally. So what are some of the details and how do they achieve this? They move the heating element to underneath the kettle inside an enclosure and that heating element is bonded to the underside of the kettle. And inside that enclosure, they have a reset switch uh, through an access hole in case it ever overloads. It has an L630 power receptacle. Uh, it's a, in a 240 volt, 23 amp, 5500 watt configuration. It's the same kind of plug as they use for the brew commander and elsewhere. So they kind of standardized on that, I think. But it's just as easy to connect and disconnect as the rectangular plug. But this one requires a slight twist to get in and out, which helps hold it in there a little bit more securely, right? Which is a good thing. And this kettle comes in, well, at least two configurations that I know about. One is a trying clamp enabled one, which I have temporarily. I'm going to be returning that because I also have a NPT configured one, which is actually more compatible with my brewery, my home brewery, um, as configured. So it's basically a replacement of my original kettle under my brew easy and reconnects back up to everything I have, including the pumps and hoses that I have today. With the NPT one, you can either get the standard or rotating valve, right? There's not a whole lot of variety there, but with the tri-clamp one, you have a few different options for your uh, valves and fittings. There's a rotating butterfly valve option, a stationary butterfly valve option, a rotating G2 linear flow valve option, and mine as shown in the video here, which is a hybrid of both the stationary dip tube with the linear flow valve. And it comes in two sizes, 10 and 20 gallons. I happen to have the 20 gallon versions, but they also have a 10 gallon version as well. And it's a pretty flexible kettle, just like any other. It can be used as a boil kettle, a mash tun, or a hot liquor tank. I use mine as both a hot liquor tank and a boil kettle as part of my brew easy. Aside from cleaning, there are some more advantages. It does not require the same minimum liquid level in the kettle like the boil coil does. With this system, not as much of a worry. Uh, with the boil coil, I think I had to maintain about six gallons of my brewing water always in the kettle. Here with this, I think I had it down to just a gallon and a half or two uh, at once upon a time during my brew day. And I never was even concerned, never had a problem with it whatsoever. And that gave me more, more water available for my mash tun for those larger grain bills and other reasons why you wanna have more water in your mash. Not as important as the other two, what I also liked about it is that it stands a little taller. So for someone as tall as myself at six foot three, and I brew in my garage with my kettle on top of a kettle cart near the floor, um, having it up another several inches higher was better for my back. And another advantage, at least for myself, the way I brew and store everything, is I put everything back inside the kettles, uh, cables, uh, brew commanders, everything can go back into the kettle. Now with the boiler coil removed, uh, you actually have more space for more gear to shove back in there so you can uh, save on storage space is my point. So are there any disadvantages? Is cost a disadvantage? Well, at the moment, I do not know the exact price they're going to um, ask for this product, but I have had assurances from Blickman that the prices will be equivalent with a, maybe a slight upcharge of a combination of boil coil and, uh, and a, a regular kettle, right? So if you add up the cost of the Boilermaker kettle with a boil coil in it, they say that the price should be comparable to that. I love it. I love this thing. Um, I'm using this probably for every brew day going forward, probably, unless something better comes along, which I'm struggling to understand what could be better than this. I mean, 
saving on cleaning, that's such a huge chore on brew day, as we all know, right? And to save on that, thumbs up to Blickman. Thank you for this awesome product. Uh, and again, speaking of Blickman, and I don't know if I emphasized this earlier enough, I did not pay for this, right? Because it's not available on the market yet. They provided this to me free of charge to get my re review and to share it with you as my viewers. And therefore, I did not pay for this. I couldn't have, right? Just to let you know, but my opinions are my opinions, and that's it. I just gave you my own personal feedback, and honestly, I am so gung-ho about this product. Um, I, I probably would have bought one anyway, if I had to. If you have any questions, put them in the comments section. Give me that thumbs up if you like what I share with you today. I plan on doing plenty of more videos with this kettle. So if you're not yet a subscriber, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you get those uh, videos in your feed. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you all next time.